Welcome to Two Minute History. Today, we're delving into the gripping tale of the Dalton gang and their audacious attempt to beat Jesse James at his own game, robbing two banks at once in broad daylight. Our story unfolds in Coffeyville, Kansas, circa 1892. Bob Dalton, the mastermind of the gang, hatched a daring plan to rob the CMN Condon Bank in the First National Bank simultaneously. The stage was set for an epic heist, with the gang members strategically positioned on opposite sides of the street. However, not all were on board with Bob's ambitious vision. Emmett Dalton, Bob's brother, voiced his concerns, having grown up in the area and fearing for the safety of friends and acquaintances in town. Despite Emmett's reservations, Bob assured him there would be no shooting, and the plan would unfold seamlessly. As the morning of October 5th, 1892 arrived, the gang emerged from Dalton Alley onto the plaza of Coffeyville. Bob, Emmett, Great, Broadwell, and Powers embarked on their fateful mission. However, unforeseen challenges quickly arose. Bob had planned for the gang to tie their horses to a post behind the Condon Bank, where it was protected from the center of town by brick walls. They had not been to the town for several years, and the hitching post had since been removed during street work. Bob would not allow Emmett to check out the town beforehand in fear that he would be recognized. Forced to improvise, Bob chose a less secure spot, an alley near the city jail. The gang, armed with Winchester rifles and fake mustaches, approached their respective targets. However, a vigilant storekeeper noticed Bob Emmett and even Great and raised the alarm, and word spread like wildfire. Chaos ensued as civilians armed themselves, ready to defend their town. Inside the banks, Great, Broadwell, and Powers confronted the Condon Bank, while Emmett and Bob targeted the First National Bank. Bob and Emmett Dalton, who had entered the First National Bank and forced the cashier, Thomas Ayers, to open the safe loaded with gold and cash. They put the gold into a sack and used Ares as a human shield as they went out the front door. They had planned to meet with Grade and cross the plaza to the alley, where they had tied their horses, but they were in for a surprise. As soon as they stepped out of the bank, Bill, scanning the seemingly empty plaza, felt an unease in the air. Then in the blink of an eye, the calm shattered into chaos. A hailstorm of bullets erupted from concealed corners, catching the gang off guard. The once quiet streets transformed into a battleground, with a crackling of gunfire echoing through the air. As the gang sought cover, the town civilians, armed and defiant, emerged from hiding places. The gunfight became a dance of lead and defiance, a symphony of chaos and courage. Shots were exchanged, ricocheting off buildings, leaving trails of dust and gun smoke in their wake as they were met with a hail of bullets from the angry citizen. An American Express agent opened fire with his revolver, hitting Bob in the chest and Emmett in the arm and hip. Still standing, Bob and Emmett returned fire and left Ayers on the sidewalk. They retreated back into the bank, hoping to find another way out. Meanwhile, Great Dalton, Dick Broadwell and Bill Powers were robbing the Condon Bank across the street. They had taken a sack of silver, but it was too heavy to carry. Grant ordered the silver taken out and stashed what cash he could fit into his coat pockets. The bank manager lied and said that the safe was on a time lock and that it wouldn't open for ten minutes. But then they heard the revolver shots from the express agent and realized that something was wrong. They also saw that the hardware store in the town had begun passing out guns to the local civilians who began firing through the windows at the Condon Bank. The three outlaws returned fire and held out, waiting for a signal from Bob. Back at the First National Bank, Bob and Emmett decided to escape through the back door of the bank, but they found more townspeople waiting for them there. Lucius Baldwin, who had been watching the door with his pistol, confronted them. Bob ordered him to drop the gun, and when he failed to answer, shot him with his Winchester, killing him. 
Bob and Emmett then made their way to the end of the back alley onto 8th Street, where they could hear the townspeople shooting at the condom bank. Outside of a drugstore across from the first national, George Cubine was standing with his Winchester aimed at the front door of the bank, awaiting the exit of Bob and Emmett. Bob shot him in the head, killing him. Cubine's partner, Charles Brown, was standing unarmed next to him and went to pick up his Winchester. As he lifted the rifle up, Bob shot and killed him. After being left on the sidewalk by Bob and Emmett, Thomas Ayres had run into one of the hardware stores and grabbed a rifle. He spotted Bob just as he had killed Brown and aimed his rifle at him from behind the store window. Bob saw Ayres from about 200 feet away and quickly shot him ahead. Ayers was not killed, but he remained paralyzed for life. In the midst of the shooting, Powers told Grade he had been hit in the arm. Grade ordered the employees to lay on the floor in the back office, and after receiving the signal from Bob, told Powers and Broadwell that it was time to leave. The three went out the side door, crouching and dashing across Walnut Street to the alley, where they had hitched their horses. Bob and Emmett met Grade and the others in the alley the sacks of money still over their arms. As the Daltons made their way west down the alley towards the horses, Town Marshal Charles T. Connolly came through the livery stable into the alley and ran east towards the plaza without noticing the bandits behind him. Graff then shot him ahead and killed him. Following behind Marshal Connolly was John Clore, still in the stable. Great noticed him, but before he could aim, Chloe shot him in the throat. Taking fire from the hardware store, Bob was hit in the head and the heart, killing him instantly. Powers tried to mount his horse, but shots from the store also killed him. Emmett was able to mount his horse unwounded and began riding away, but after noticing Bob was hit, turned around and attempted to lift Bob onto his horse. Emmett was then hit in the back with a load of buckshot. Broadwell was hit several times, but managed to ride away. He was found two miles away, dead. Bill Dalton and Bill Doolin had been waiting several miles away with extra horses to aid the gang's escape. After getting tired of waiting, they left only to learn later the fate of the gang. The gun battle was over and the Dalton gang had met their end in Coffeeville. Out of the five outlaws, only Emmett survived, but he was badly wounded and captured. Four townspeople also lost their lives in the shootout. The Dalton gang's ill-fated attempt to outshine Jesse James stands as a testament to the unforgiving nature of the Old West. This has been Two Minute History, where tales of daring heists and wild frontiers shape our understanding of the past. If you enjoyed this journey through history, hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. 